This video shows the case study on population imaging from the Indigo project. This use case is developed by the Institute of Instrumentation for Molecular Imaging from the Technical University of Valencia in Spain, in collaboration with the Center of Excellence of Biomedical Engineering and the BIMCV Eurobioimaging S3 node. Our use case deals with the processing of medical images in a medical imaging biobank. Our problem is that we are BMCV, an, an Eurobioimaging S3 node that is managing a population database from an area of 5 million people and offering that for research projects. This project comes in the form of applications that request a, a set of data to be processed. So the projects have a scientific objective that is evaluated via committee. For example, the training set of models for the automatic segmentation of bone tissues in osteoporotic women, for example. We provide this research data, but also we would like to provide a way to process this data because data without the services is useless. However, we have limited resources and we can also accommodate a reduced amount of pilot applications. I would like to provide a framework in which these applications can be uh, implemented and executed. So we are seeking for a model to provide these services rather than simply data and implementing a closer follow-up of the activities. So our main workflow is that we start from the regional PACS data, we create volumes anonymized data, and then we uh, expose this data to be processed by a specific software configuration in an infrastructure. The requirements that we have in this uh, use case are the need of a persistent uh, data storage that can be accessed through a standard POS6 file uh, model protocols, to have access control lists to access the data, to have the capability of execute data-driven and computing intensive workflows, to have the possibility of uh, defining a customized software configuration for the processing nodes, to deploy our own software and users specific software on this uh, infrastructure, to uh, have resources that self-adapt to the workload, to have be able to access on terminal mode to the resources, to have online access to the data and the results produce it, to manage users and groups and their permissions, and to have a long-term viability of their results. Finally, we need provenance and capability of repeat, re repeating the experiments with the same uh, conditions. So we identified a set of components uh, from Indigo, which are basically the IAM authentication mode, the one data volumes, the infrastructure manager, the, con the orchestrator, and the close elastic uh, system that rely on a set of technologies like Ansible, Rolls, Oasis Tosca specifications, Ansible, Galaxy, GitHub, and Docker Hub repositories and Slurm queues. So all these requirements are in some way addressed by the different components that we identified. In this video, you will see how the infrastructure manager and the orchestrator and Clues address some of the, of the problems. And also, will, you will see some interactions with the IAM system. So with more detail, um, our solution goes to uh, several stages. The first stage is to the produce the data that is needed for the uh, project. So from the information that we have at the hospital, we go through a process of verification, annotation, and anonymization to create a research repository that is, uh, should be available by the different project volumes using uh, one data. Once that this volume is created, then we need an infrastructure to process it. For that, we have point second, the specification of the dependencies as Ansible GML. So what we define is the virtual infrastructure in a set, in a document, a standard document. I will use this specification to create an infrastructure that can be deployed on any a public cloud or on-premise cloud, that, as we will show in the demo. Points two, three are shown in the video details after this uh, slides, set of slides. So once that we have defined the exact 
topology of the application of the virtual infrastructure we want to run. In our case, it's an elastic queue. What we want is a queue, a batch queue, to process all the individual uh, jobs that deals with the, with the processing of the images in a batch mode. And we need an elastic queue that adapts, increases and decreases the number of available nodes depending on the size of this queue. So we will use clues for that and we will use one data to mount the volumes on the different system. Actually, we'll use a model that uses partially VMs and partially containers for executing the program. Finally, the jobs are executed in a SLARM queue embedded on containers that mount locally the shared volume. This part will not be demonstrated in this video. As you can see, the dark violet or dark indigo uh, boxes represent the generic components of indigo and the light indigo color represent those that are related to our pilot case. The two sets of elements that we will demonstrate in the video are basically those that are needed for the deployment of self-managed elastic compute clusters. On one side we have the orchestrator, or command line interface and infrastructure manager. These three components enable us to deploy the virtual infrastructure that is needed for the processing of our uh, uh, images as a document. So we describe in a document how is the infrastructure uh, configured, how it should be configured, and we deploy this description on any IIS. In our case, we will use our um, Open Nebula backend, but we, will, we could use other uh, backends like, for example, Amazon Cloud or OpenStack. So we will deploy this using a, a, or the Orkin uh, command line interface that is basically a wrap-up to interact with the orchestrator that decides which is the best uh, site in order to make the deployment of, the, of our virtual infrastructure which is configured using the infrastructure manager. So in this way we avoid manual installation of the infrastructure and we are able to deal with different and even compatible incompatible configuration simultaneously for multiple uh, projects and multiple uh, users. Imagine a project that requires a specific version for software, a specific version of Java that are not uh, compatible with the others. So the, our success metric for this part is the higher viability, the reduced maintenance effort that we only have to concentrate on the on the doc on the descriptions of the configuration for each pilot and then we concentrate on the on the config general configuration of the cluster by the administrations. There is no performance penalty because we use uh, con containers and higher isolation by the means of using separate volumes and separate uh, deployments. On the other side, for providing the elasticity that we need, we use CLUS. CLUS is key in order to, pro to have the self-management of a cluster. This way, CLUS uh, is integrated with the Tosca templates and also interacts with uh, infrastructure manager to add or remove nodes and reconfigure automatically the infrastructure. This way we don't have to consume more resources than needed. CLUS interacts with the Sulorm in order to understand if there are pending jobs so new, more resources should be added or there are idle resources that should be removed. In the words of one of our final users, Angel Alberic, a doctor that is a researcher of the Hospital University of La Fe in Valencia and the CEO of a spin-off uh, for biomarkers imaging, says that Indigo GBSTO pilot is indeed very relevant for the interoperability with different cloud infrastructures we want to achieve with our biomarkers platform. So let's go to the video. The video shows in first uh, the, the Tosca document so and the input variables that we'll use that are generic variables and then we'll see the different blocks. So we will use a template that uses a slurm queue and in this the outlined part shows the templates of the front end including the need of a public IP. The working nodes that are on this patch queue are described in this part and as for example you can see that we define a minimal number of two instances by default and the use in both cases of Ubuntu 16 as uh, the base. So then we use IAM to authenticate with the system so we get a token that can be used to interact with the orchestrator using the IAM 
client uh, directly. So we copy the access token and then with this access token we can interact with all the services without need of uh, additional login and password. So we create the variables orcan token that has this token and orcan URL that has the address of the orchestrator. The orchestrator is the component that will, uh, uh, that will identify the most suitable um, site to deploy our system and then we will create the infrastructure. We will use the description, Tosca description that is on the left side and we'll use Orken to create one infrastructure using dev create command. As you can see we have an ID as a result and this ID can be used to query the status of the deployment using deep so uh, command. So with this we can check and see that the infrastructure is being created and after we have this information we can wait for that. So we will wait for the infrastructure to be deployed which is about 10 minutes. Then once the infrastructure is created then we can see and we can get the access uh, credentials. The result will be a private key that can be used to access the front end. So we save this private key, we will provide, we will uh, give this private key with the um, proper uh, pr um, attributes and the proper uh, access mode, I mean the permissions for accessing, which are restrictive. And then we will SSH on the front node using this private key, using root as the user and the public IP that we request when we define it. So now we are inside the cluster and then we can see that we have a queue that has two nodes available. The others, three, five, are idle, are not booted. They will be booted once that we submit jobs. As we don't have more time for the, for the video, uh, this part will be sold in future uh, demonstrations. So finally, um, in this short video you have seen how to use the um, Orkant uh, command line interface to interact with the orchestrator and then request the deployment of a complete virtual infrastructure that has a patch queue that is self-managed. You can use this not only for medical images, but for any other application that you may need. More information in indigodatacloud.eu website. Indigo, better software for better science.